question. So they're asking the question, can I retire at 55 years old with, uh, I don't know how much money they got in assets. Where are we at? $1.7 million. <laughs> I got notes. I should probably look down and look at them with $1.7 million in retirement savings. So retirement age, 55 and 52. So Peter's going to retire at 55. Kristen's going to retire at the same time. Current income, $72,000. Peter's 54. 50,000 is Kristen's uh, salary. She's 51. They both just want to retire at the same time, right? It doesn't always work this way. I've got many clients who one retires and the other one keeps working and vice versa. So in this case, they want to retire at the same time. With 1.7 million saved, we're probably going to be able to do that. But what we got to look at for them, it's different from are they going to run out of money? The reason I want to show you this scenario is a couple fold. First, they're really conservative investors. So I'm going to show you a really, really, really low rate of return for the money, meaning the money that's in the market is going to earn less than the 6% that I normally project. So we're going to do a very low rate of return. And I also want to show you their freedom fund. They have a large bucket of non-qualified brokerage account. And I preach on this channel about putting money into a brokerage account, always contributing to your 401k if you're getting a match, always doing the catch-up contribution if it allows you and you're over the age of 50. And that's going to change if Secure Act 2.0 passes, which it looks like it's going to. So keep an eye out for that. But if you have the ability to put money into a brokerage account, to another type of investment account, that's going to do you really good if you want to retire at 55, if you want to retire before age 59 and a half, and I want to show you that, I want to talk about that. So they're conservative. We've got a really large freedom fund. And I also want to look at their social security and repositioning some of their investments. Okay. So let's look at this. So social security for both of them, we're going to take it 67 years old, which is their full retirement age. So that's going to be a hundred percent of their full retirement benefit. For Peter, that's $2,313 a month. For Kristen, it's $2,151 a month. Now, it's going to hit at two different times because they're about three years apart, right? Three years in age. So Peter's is going to kick on first, and then Kristen's is, Kristen's is going to kick on. Keep in mind, if we lose one of these, we lose one of them, we're going to lose one of the Social Securities to be the higher of the two. So when we think about doing a scenario like this, if their income supports it, we might want to push them out to 70. Or if their income doesn't support it in the sense of like we're draining our retirement assets, maybe we take Peter's Social Security and we take his at 67 and we push Kristen's to 70 because his is first. So if the market's having issues or we're taking more money than we thought we were going to take, we take his Social Security at 67, get the 100 percent benefit. Maybe that balances out how much retirement income that's coming out. And then we let Kristen's go till 70 and that'll push it to the 124% of the full retirement or of the social security of the full retirement benefit so that when we lose one of them, whether it's Peter or Kristen, now we're going to get a higher social security. So we're trying to do this planning. Okay. We're not going to get into that on the video. That's just food for thought. So asset wise, we've got three assets, three simple assets. We've got non-qualified money in a taxable brokerage account of about a million dollars. We've got a 401k that's at risk meaning the money's in the market, $500,000 in the 401k. We've got 2,080 that's going into that monthly contribution. And we've got a bank account that's got $240,000 in it. Now, Kristen does not have a 401k or a 403b at her job. They don't have any IRAs, Roth IRAs, anything like that. They've literally just taken her contributions and put it here and put it here. And they've done some other investing. They've sold some real estate. And that's where we've got some of these higher values as well. But at this point, they have simplified everything because they want to get into retirement. Now, protected assets, they still do have two homes. They've got a $500,000 home and they've got a $350,000 rental. So that gives them $850,000 in a physical asset. So when we look at our, when we look at our net worth, we've got $1.7 million in spendable assets and $850,000 in protected assets or real estate. And we've got $2.59 million in total portfolio value. Current contributions are 2080 So can I retire at 55 with a net worth of $2.6 million? Yeah, you can. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this portion of the video is to look at two different things. A very low rate of return, which we're going to get into, and 
why it's so important to have a freedom fund that allows you to retire early. Now, you can still retire at 55 with a rule of 55. You can still retire with a 72T if you're under the age of 59 and a half. But if you can build up this brokerage account and you can use that for income between 50 whatever and 59 and a half, and the only taxes you're paying are interest, dividends, you're getting to write off capital losses, that's going to allow this pre-tax money here to continue to grow. It's also going to allow this pre-tax money to be used for Roth conversions. If you ever want to do Roth conversions and you have a freedom bucket, okay? So let's say you have a large bucket of non-qualified money, meaning just capital gains, interest, and dividends is taxed, and you have some IRA 401k style money and you're taking income out of this bucket here, you might not have as much, you're not going to have as much taxes as if you were taking ordinary income out of your IRA. So what that allows you to do is to do Roth conversion planning because now you can do Roth conversions, meaning you can move money out of your IRA into a Roth IRA, pay the taxes on the amount of money that you move out, and that's, and that's going to keep you in a low tax bracket because you're not pulling money out of your IRA to live off of and doing a Roth conversion. So you're doubling your income. You're taking money out of a non-qualified account, paying taxes, let's say, on capital gains and dividends, which are less than ordinary income. You're doing your IRA and doing Roth conversions. Man, that's like, that's perfect. That's the perfect scenario. So we've got the million dollars in the non-qualified, 500 in the 401k, and 240 in the bank. So their rate of return, we talked about this. They're super conservative investors. So they want to look at 4% on all their money that's earning money in the market and 0% on the bank. Because again, it's in the bank, it's earning nothing. Now, again, you can go to Marcus or Ally Bank or I think SoFi or whoever, and you get a higher rate of return on some of those rates, which I encourage you to do. And you can buy short-term treasuries now for what's the short end of the curve look like? Uh, let's see here. One month treasury, 3.9. One year treasury, 4.6. So you can actually repurpose some money into short-term treasuries right now if you want to. Now, this video is December 22nd of 2022, so it might change when you look at this. Uh, you can just go to Y charts, daily treasury yield curve, and you can get this. Uh, but it might be worthwhile positioning some of your money in some short-term treasuries. But for them, we're just we're looking at the bank. They're at zero. Their houses and their rental property is going to grow at 1%. Okay. And cash flows, that's four. So 4%. So we're in a very low rate of return. Now, our expenses are $6,667. So we got a little bit higher of expenses than normal, but it's a couple. 55000 is the average retirement expenses uh, that you would need. That's nationwide, but it's going to be different in Texas. They live in Texas. God bless Texas. It's going to be different in Texas than it is in Florida. Florida is the land of the free, um, which is going to be different from New York. Different from California, different from Kentucky, where I grew up, go Wildcats. Uh, different from Indiana, Illinois, wherever, right? Montana. So there's at 6,667. They've got some higher expenses. They've got mortgage and things like that in there as well. Now, cash flows, we've got rental income coming in of $833 a month. Remember, they had their rental property of 350. So that's going to come in for life. They plan on keeping that forever. It was an inherited property. Uh, it's paid off so they can use that income uh, for as long as they want. So if we look at this, 55 and 52 years old, retiring with $1.7 million. Here's our assets or here's our retirement income coming out. Here's our social security kicking on. There's our rental income. The rental income does get inflation on it, right? So that goes up as well. Here's our social securities. There's the both of them kicking on right there. So both of them at 67 or here's, uh, let me back up. Here's Peter at 67 to 2,313. And then at 70, Kristen's Social Security kicks in plus Peter's with the COLA increase. So it's 4,597. Mm -hmm. Now, what you'll notice, they got $1.7 million in assets, but based on their expenses, they're out of money at 82 and 79. Now, that's just their spendable assets. They still got $1.1 million in their property. So they could sell the rental property. They could sell their home, move into the rental. There's a lot of different options, but let's just say they want to keep it as is. So for them, we need to do something because they're still really conservative investors. They do not, do not want to be very aggressive. Now, if you look here, what the software, what the EKG shows us, 
they only have to earn 6.27% to make this money last forever. And I always do projections at 6%, but they don't want that. They want a 4% projection. Okay, so we got to do what the client wants. I want to do 4%. Now, if they were saying, give me a 9 or 10% projection, I would say, listen, as a fiduciary, I ain't going to do that. I'll give you a 6%, maybe an 8% if you're younger, because we're going to look long term. If you're like in your 30s, but 6% in retirement, because again, we're positioning our retirement assets for that. So we go back to their assets and I go, okay, guys, we got $240,000 in the bank. Now they have a lot of money in the bank because again, they're conservative. They don't like the market. They're just, you know, I mean, it's just is what it is. They're concerned. They have the same concerns that you guys have. Inflation, stock market crashes. They see what's going on in the world. They, you know, the war in Ukraine and China and, you know, all that stuff. They see it and they're concerned. But I say, listen, what if we can reposition some of this into the market, keeping it conservative? What's that going to do? And so let's look at taking. So we're at 240 in the bank right now. Let's take out of this 240, let's take 150,000. So 240, my calculator, you go. 240. I always do it on a calculator when I'm on a live stream because I get nervous. I don't want you to think I don't know how to do math. Here we go 90,000. That's what's left. So 150 minus 240, that's $90,000, which we left in the bank. We're going to reposition. This money here, this 150, it's going to go into a non-qualified account, just like the million dollars, but I want to keep it separated. So this is going to be non-qualified. This is going to be, and let's just say, manage money at risk because it's in the market. And then we want to change our withdrawal order. Let's do that real quick. So at retirement, we want this to be here. Because remember, we want to withdraw those non-qualified assets first. Let that 401k continue to grow. So we're looking at withdrawal order here at retirement. We're going to take these non-qualified assets first, right? We're going to take those months. We're going to use that for income first. The 401k is going to be the third bucket. The reason we're going to leave it at the third bucket is because we can do Roth conversions. We can do other type of planning with that money. So we're going to leave that there. We're going to go to rate of return here. We're going to add in 4% for the money that's, that we just took out of the bank. Now, again, I'm not trying to talk them out of taking money out. Of, I mean, when you got that kind of money in the bank, it's because you're nervous or you're going to do something with it. So, you know, it's a conversation we have. And now we go back and we say, does that help us at all? Gets us to 84 and 81. So now we go, some things have got to change, right? 55 years old, we got $1.7 million dollars. What can we adjust? Well, the only thing that we can adjust, remember, there's there's things that you can control in retirement and there's things you can't control. One of the things they can't control is what the market's doing, which is why they want to project lower. That's just their risk capacity. It's just their risk tolerance. It's where they want to be. So we can control our expenses. Can we lower these? Now, their mortgage is included in this, which is a fixed expense, which will eventually go away, but they refinance when rates were low. So we're at a 30-year period, okay? It's not all of their expenses, but it's about 2,000 of them. So what if we take this and we can lower this to 5,500? So we still have our mortgage in there, but now we're able to lower our expenses to 5,500. We were at 6,000. Now we're taking, I mean, we're at 6,600. Now we're taking 55. Now it gets us to 96 and 93. That's $1,000 a month that we cut out of the expenses in order to get us to 96 and 93. Yeah, keep in mind, now look what it does for rate of return. The rate of return is 4.5%. So we brought our expenses down, which means we have to earn less in the market. Now we had to reposition some of our bank money. We're still really conservative at 4%, but that gets us to 96 and 93. Now keep in mind, 85 years old, we got $1.2 million. Our houses are worth 1.16. So at that point, you could sell the rental for $480,000. That would be an influx of four hundred eighty dollars at that point. That's going to do really good there. Or you sell your main home and you move into the rental. Or you do a reverse, whatever. Okay? So th- this is not a scenario where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. You're, 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 you know, you're SOL. Not really. You just need to make some adjustments. And that's the big thing with retirement planning. It's all about adjustments. You know, all the videos that I do that you watch on YouTube, that's after adjustments have been made for the most part. You know, we've gone through hours of visits together and talked about different scenarios. And I've done hours of planning for them. And we've looked and we said, okay, this is the clear scenario that makes the most sense. 
But in some cases, we have to make adjustments. That's why it's so important for them, for Peter and Kristen. You know, they're only 55 when they retire. Now, they're currently 54 and 51, and they're current clients. So this is something we're going to look at on a quarterly basis to make sure that we're on track. And hopefully we earn more than 4%. You know, hopefully we're able to stay conservative in our investments and earn more than 4%, but maybe not. Okay. So any other questions? I'll hang on for like, I've been an hour. An hour is way too long for me, right? Your mind can only absorb what your hind end can take. That's what an old Baptist preacher said. So you want to make sure that you, I want to make sure that you are able to uh, get out of here. And get, it's 12 o'clock on the East Coast. I got to go get some lunch. Uh, any questions or comments? Remember, when we're doing planning, you always want to make sure that you're looking at a few different things. When are you going to retire? So if you're saying, hey, can I retire at 55? When am I going to retire? How much in retirement income am I going to need when I do retire? Okay, when am I going to retire? How much retirement income am I going to need? Where's my retirement income going to come from? If I retire at 53, retire at 55, where's my income coming from? How long is that going to last based on projections? When am I going to take Social Security? 62, 67, 70, 64, 68. When are you going to take Social Security? And how are you going to be invested as you go into retirement? So all of that is what's encompassed in what we call the Your Financial EKG. If you want a Your Financial EKG, you want to talk with me, go to the description below. All that information is there. Mm -hmm.